Ciao, this is Cristiano from BrightMinded and I've now made a few videos about SSL certificates and self-signed certificates but they assume that you know what they are and how they work so in this video I would like to take a little step back and look at the basics of what's going on so the other videos may make a bit more sense so here's a quick and dirty explanation of SSL your browser makes a uh, request to a web server for a secure web page which is usually a page with an address that starts with HTTPS. When the web server receives the request, it sees that it is for a secure page. And what it does is it sends back a public key and an SSL certificate, which is essentially a file with a bunch of information about the website owner, among other things. The browser then receives this public key and the SSL certificate and the first thing that it does is it inspects the certificate here to see that it was issued by a trusted entity also known as certificate authority uh, to check that the certificate hasn't expired yet and also that the certificate is actually related to the site you are requesting. If everything is okay then the browser generates a random symmetric key here and it uses it to encrypt some info, um, basically uh, the request address plus some other data. It then uses the public key from the server to encrypt the whole thing, i.e. the symmetric key and the extra info, and ships it back to the web server. When the web server receives this uh, encrypted package, it uses the private key, its own private key, to decrypt the payload and thus retrieving the symmetric key here and then uses the symmetric key to decrypt the extra information i.e. the request URL and the extra data. From now on both the browser and the server will use the symmetric key to encrypt data before sending it and to decrypt it when it arrives. I would now like to quickly touch on the on self-signed certificate. Now Trusted certificates, which are those your browser trusts, are those that were issued and signed by so-called certificate authorities like DigiCert, GoDaddy and Komodo. These companies went through various hurdles and hoops in order to get this trusted status. On the other hand, a self-signed certificate is one that you generate and sign yourself. And unless you are a trusted certificate authority, your browser will complain and show a warning page if it sees this self-signed certificate. However, self-signed certificates have their use. For one, they're free, so they're good for personal websites. They're also useful when you're testing a new secure website before spending the money for a real certificate. And finally, certificate authorities actually have to generate one, and it's called a root certificate, which identifies them as a root certificate authority. Thank you very much for watching.